Well, if we're not, we're Memorex. Facebook's <laughs> lagging, which it always does. It always does, so that's fine. So, so. We'll, we'll deal with that. We're recording yeah. this, too, for Mr. YouTube land. Yeah. But Kyle, this past weekend, went on a adventure. It's a good way to put it. So. And <laughs> I really know nothing about it mm -hmm. other than you went and you talked with, from my understanding, other marketers across the country. Yes, from different tech, uh, I guess. Big tech, tech companies. Right, I had the opportunity to talk with people from big tech companies. And there. you were the only one from the Midwest, I think, right? Yeah, we had, most of them were from the, the California area. There were a few that were from uh, the Bay Area. Okay. Uh, I think we had one person from, I want to say Boston or Maine, I think, somewhere up the uh, East Coast. Uh, but most of them were from the area, and they were at this event. Okay. Um, and it was just, I, I can't go into too many details because, you know, there's like a whole compliancy thing. But the main reason we were there was to basically present our knowledge. And these are people, there were people from HubSpot, uh, somebody from Tinder, uh, Salesforce was there, re represented there. Um, there was a person from, it was a... It's a Japanese company based in the Silicon Valley area. There's a Drupal person who was an actual Drupal developer there. Very cool. Yeah, and so we all got to just kind of meet and mix and present our cause on why we were uh, experts in our field and uh, what could we potentially do to get ourselves out there more. I so you were the only small guy. I was the only small guy, and it caught everyone off guard. It caught the committee off guard and it caught the um it, it caught everyone else who was there off guard as well they were they were first of all they were in disbelief that the midwest has any kind of presence like that um and then okay. second of all second of all um they were in disbelief that um somebody who specializes in small to medium businesses uh would be accepted to be there and expected to have a presence there and not in a mean way. It was just their whole life. They just never knew that this was possible. So they think that because we're a small company that we can't handle what the big guys do. Ab yeah, absolutely. Or we we didn't have the foresight or the knowledge or the solutions, I should say, uh, to fix problems of any business because we were just small. When they when they think small and they think Midwest, they think just out of somebody's basement or something like okay, that. Okay, you know? so. You look at that, and I know we strive for 100% or 99.9 .9, as much as we can, mm. organic growth with custom-written content and everything else. Right. Is that what the big guys do, or how do they try to well, solve problems? I had a very interesting conversation, and I don't want to say the name of the company. because No, please don't. I don't want to get sued or anything like that, but she works for a company that is a popular dating app. So I'm sure okay. you can figure it out if you look. But anyway, now it's Valentine's Day. Uh, and because it's Valentine's Day, they said a lot of people are looking to swipe and get lucky on the app. Uh, so we want to get it out there across different social media uh, networks. And I said, that's that's fair. It makes a lot of sense. And so we got to talk to each other about that. And so I was curious, like, how does a big company handle uh, their social media? You know, how do they curate? How do they read the analytics and plan things ahead uh, compared to like what we do. And it was it was shocking to me where just long story short, she's like, well, we do have a content plan. You know, holidays are important. Um, but I said, but how do you get organic reach? And they're like, well, this is what we do. We create the content, we create the calendar, we post it. Um, if people start asking questions and why isn't this converting, why isn't this getting results? Uh, what we do after that is we basically tell them we need ad money and we just keep going persisting, persisting, persisting um, and until they say, all right, fine, here's a 50K budget for the month for ads. Run any ads you want as long as they're approved. And they said, and problem solved. Um, is that really problem solved it, or are you just kind of mm, <laughs> covering it and it's still kind of <laughs> fucked up? Well, from her point of view, 
problem is solved because she says she's there to get a paycheck. She's there to get a paycheck. She's not really looking at the long term growth. growth she's of looking the company. at today. At today, and she's like, when you go into business manager and everything's green and everything's up and the engagement's up and people are heart reacting and laughing, um, she's like, then it's me to them looking at me. Looks like I did a great job. And I'm like, does that really create customers? And that's what I said. Does it convert? Does it work? And she said. We, she doesn't care. We don't know, and she says we don't. As long care. as the analytics look good, then we don't care about the bottom line. Right, and she said, "Look at this." She's like, "It's been light, you know, over two hundred and sometimes." It was an ad, um, and she's like, "It got shared a few times, and people tagged their friends and said, oh, Jessica, you know, sign up, you know, oh, well, what are you doing this Valentine's Day?'" And she's like, "So to them, it works." I'm like, "But does that truly fix your problem? It fixes it now, but I'm like, does it fix it long term?" But does it even fix it now? Are they? I mean, for any type of, like in this case, a dating app, mm -hmm. they need subscribers. Yeah, 100%. And then that's the thing, too. This dating app, well, most dating apps are free. They get their revenue from people signing up for what is basically their membership service. So yes. let's, you know, you get extra likes or you get extra ability, uh, time to swipe again if you don't match with somebody. Um, you get extra super likes, things like that. That's where they get their revenue from. And so it, it's they said too that like we don't really push that through advertising because the way it's working now is that people more or less get desperate and this was in her words they get desperate they oh what a good looking person i I'll, I'll give you 10 bucks so i can have the chance to you know be with this person and live happily forever so this but i but the, the thing that I took away from it is that there is a plan, but it's not a plan that's followed. It's not a plan that's checked in on, and it just basically involves throwing money at things. And so it came. So it's like my scenario of taking spaghetti, throwing it against the wall, and see what shit. Yeah. What what? And stick. it just I was, I I was I was shocked. I, I I was shocked that a large company with this much revenue is just. And I guess yeah, they have a lot of revenue is so willing to recklessly spend for something that they don't quite know is working. And maybe if it does work now, they're not planning on how they're going to implement this to work in the future. And the answer at the end is just, we're, we're gonna throw some money at it. Well, it's we like, we see other small companies doing that, where right. they're like, oh, we need more money to fix it, but it's not really a fix. It's not even a, I wouldn't even call it a Band-Aid. It's think just about it, it's wasting really not, their yeah. money because all they're trying to do is say, oh, look, you look, you're growing, mm -hmm. but you're not adding your bottom line. Because I always go, if would you rather have a thousand people that like your stuff mm -hmm. or would you rather have 10, but the 10 actually buy where the thousand don't? They don't. They just interact. and they and I, So just yeah. getting likes, and that's why maybe Facebook's trying to get rid of them, mm -hmm. is they don't don't really do anything to the bottom line of the they, business. They hate, uh, this was a separate organization that was there. They have a, they they call the likes a funny term, they called it a like economy, because they said it is your digital currency, I guess, or your social status uh, on social media platforms, which is true, and for a person, yeah. But for businesses, you know, that, and I was just, it, it, and I don't, I'm not putting down any of these businesses, but it just, it really surprised me that, um, how much disconnect there is between departments and how much the the planning is there but it's not there at the same time so and it's not a cohesive strategy it's really not i understand that we we believe in ourselves you have to break departments down you have to let everybody do their own thing but at the end of the day we all still kind of work together we're all on the same page some more than others but if push comes to shove we know what to do if something you know if, if kyle's doing this and, and John's doing this, and our other people are doing this, who aren't even here, by the way, and they're working remote. Um, we know how to keep everybody on the same page. Our CRM is one example for that. Um, okay. Being, which I don't utilize this, uh, I found out. Um, having an effective communication structure, and I know we've been working with several uh, business consulting companies as well, you know, to even, to tighten down that structure even farther. Yeah. Um, but the thing that that also, I guess, blew me away is that they were surprised what we offered. Not in terms of just throwing money at the wall, but in terms of functionality. 
Um, okay. These people were generally surprised that we stressed content, that we created our original content, that we didn't utilize a service uh, such as HubSpot or something like that to bring the content you know, to our clients said because it saves time and saves money. Um, and I explained to them, I'm like, the way things work is original content will always win out. You know? It wins a hundred times over and a lot of times when you link to other content, mm -hmm. they have Google ads on their site. Yes. And if you're going to and you're pushing this magical new hamburger that check out this hamburger because you're a restaurant and you're like, oh, we have the exact same hamburger. Right. Nine times out of ten, or realistically, ten times out of ten, when they you send them to that page, you're not listed unless you're doing paid ads, right? And you're outbidding everybody, right? But your competition is there, right? And people are like, "Oh, I'm interested." Um, there's a person I know that's a dentist. Okay. That's right down the road in Chesterton. Okay. They got a radio ad. All they right. were they they were. They were killing it at like say seven o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Rush hour traffic, everything else. Another dentist, hell of a lot smarter than the first dentist, mm -hmm. came in at seven oh one, right oh. after. So the first dentist got the pitch, mm -hmm. got him enticed. Mm -hmm. The second dentist closed the deal. <laughs> brilliant. I like, I like br that. It's brilliant I marketing, like but horrible on the first dentist. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, Horrible that they didn't have in their contract that you can't put my competitor right after me. Right. Or not even realizing it until one of their friends said, you know, how's that working for you? And they're like, we're not getting, we're not getting anything. We right. had something for a week or two and then it just died. Mm -hmm. And they're like, it's because your competition is right after you. All that money down the drain. 100%. <laughs> and, and that's what I want to emphasize. And maybe it was just that these people who they sent as representatives didn't were quite aware of what was going on. But even the committee that who was supposed to choose these people, uh, I presented to they they were shocked that we utilize the CRM to keep in constant contact with our employees and staff and clients. Uh, they were surprised that we actually have a plan that can guarantee 10% growth. They said, I, that's insane to even offer 1%, let alone 10%. They said, we're skeptical that you have the data to back this up. And like I said, I'm like, had six years worth of data. we would have never said off of this if we didn't know it wouldn't work. I'm like, we, we know what works. We know And how it's without saying, oh, you have to spend $50,000 a month on ads. Right. Anybody can get growth if you just throw money hundred percent, right. But then what happens when you cancel the ads? You drop off the it face drops of the like earth a stone. because you yep. haven't worked on the core, your organic, which is your foundational element. And even these larger companies and organizations that were there as well, they said we put a lot of, and there's nothing wrong with it, kind of, and I'll get to that. We put a lot of focus into one area. And I said our difference is we put a extreme amount of focus into all areas. So everything is working to get together. So one component is not carrying all the load. Everybody is carrying an equal amount of the load to basically get the business out there. So, well, you have to because, I mean, yes, Facebook's big. Yes. But at one time, AOL was big. Yeah. They was 99% of the internet. MySpace then was MySpace big. was mm -hmm. big. Both of those pretty much they exist, but they don't exist. We were talking about that too. <laughs> Google Plus was backed by a multi-billion dollar, dollar company, company with, and it went away. Right, unlimited money. And Facebook's now becoming the new AOL, so somebody's gonna come in and outdo it. I mean, you have TikTok and all these other people trying to get their foot in the door. I mean, yes, TikTok's the younger generation right mm -hmm. now, but who's to say it's not the big one down the road? And you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket unless you're an idiot. Exactly. And the thing is, too, and I was I was a bit shocked because I thought we shook this mentality so long ago. But apparently, to some businesses, they still have it. Uh, everybody's chasing the belief that they have to be on everything. And I said, I strongly disagree with that. Because one of the questions, whether this was a mock question just to test, or I don't know, but they said, um, we want to advertise on TikTok. And I basically told them, I think that's a bad idea. I'm like, because your audience is anywhere from 30 to 60 year olds. I'm like, and they are not really utilizing TikTok. Yeah. And they said, but, we, but 
And but it's the latest, greatest thing. It's I gotta the latest, be honest. greatest thing, and they sent us the stats and they sent us the numbers. I'm like, those numbers are great. I'm like, but at the same time, if none of those people, again, are going to engage with you or interact with you or purchase from you, it's wasted time. And they said, well, we don't really want to use LinkedIn because the reach isn't as big. I'm like, A, it's growing. I'm like, every year, LinkedIn has shown signs of becoming more of a platform for businesses to It is truly the business version out. of Facebook. If you do business to business, 100%, 100% LinkedIn, down. yeah. Um, and I'm like, and B, I'm like, yes, it may be less, but at the same time, I'm like, if you are reaching a smaller audience, but those people are engaged with what you're presenting, they follow your brand, they they like the philosophies of your business, they um, they start buying from you, or they start going down that sales funnel you create on there, whether it's through LinkedIn ads or through your organic content, wouldn't you rather have people that are dedicated like that? I'm like, the, the whole core idea is that you have to build fans. You have to build people who like what you have, who invest in what you have. And I said, that is what I've learned by working with smaller businesses. And I even said, I'm like, I may not work for a larger company like Amazon. I'm like, but that doesn't necessarily mean the knowledge and the techniques and the things that we do are less than what they do. I'm like, do we have as much cash flow? And I'm like, no, we don't. Nobody, very few people do. But on that note, I'm like, everything else is exactly the same. And just because they are a smaller business or a medium-sized business doesn't mean we can't present the same things that they're doing to help them grow as well. And I said, that's what I feel sets us apart from everyone else. And to be quite frank, they said they were a little taken aback by that, but not in a bad way. They said, that's, we can't argue with that. They said, you think the one set you said 50,000 a month yeah. That's tenfold more than what we charge for an entire year. Exactly. Of written content that's organic, specifically written for our client. Exactly. Whereas theirs is just an ad. That's not counting anything else. And it sounds like they're not getting the results they want because they're not creating that organic content. They're sending people to other places on the internet mm. that aren't them. Exactly. One. They even said, I, I think this, this dating app, one time they posted something. And again, this is perfectly fine to an extent. They said, well, we, you know, we, we were looking for new ideas. We, we went to some like, dating sites and some um, dating, you know, popular dating magazines and publications, and we posted a few articles from them. And I said, why didn't you take those ideas and turn them into your own blogs? They said, it wouldn't make much of it. I'm like, I, I think it would. It would I make really 100% think it, difference. I really think it and would. And we have the statistics to prove yes. it. Yes, I'm like, I, I think it would. I'm like, all you're doing is you're just getting Teen People and, and Vogue magazine, um, you know. You're sending them to your competition. To their, to sending them to their website. And I'm like, and I, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm like, you, just, people are going to you because you are the expert. You are going to connect them through this app to the love of their life. You know, so they'll be, they'll be happily ever after. It is you who should be giving this advice and you should be giving this information. As a brand, you want to be recognized. You don't want to share the spotlight or the heat with anyone else because you don't no. want people going to them. It's it, No, it just sounds like somebody saw like an upper management saw, hey, my teenage daughter was looking at this app mm -hmm. or this article, so you need to throw it on social media. It's like, why would I promote my competition? And that's a big problem somebody told me something funny whether this is true or not i don't know and i'm not going to say the company they work for they're like they don't have people who always are in the know or in the trenches uh make the correct decisions it's somebody who is higher up they may be out of touch they get paid way more than those people but basically it's them making a decision you you hope and pray that it's a good decision and whether it is or not you have to make it work. So it's the it's the the square peg in the round hole. And they said that's why so when a lot of business decisions or advertising or anything when it comes out, they said sometimes it hits the hits the nail on the head and it's fantastic. They said, but sometimes it just doesn't, it falls flat. And that's with everybody. But at the same time, they said not all these decisions are being made necessarily by the people who are truly knowledgeable. They're, it's hierarchy. They're made by people at the top because they get paid more, because they work their way up, they're the experts, regardless of whether they truly are. But that's where you can just spend money to make it look good. You just throw, you just throw money. And again, each and every one of these businesses, I didn't even mention all of them, uh, each and every one of these representatives I spoke to from these companies have basically said that we have 
more than enough money to use that strategy. And when push comes to shove, the things aren't working, that's typically what we do. And everything goes green, all the analytics are up for that month or that week or however long you want to run the ad. Everybody pats themselves on the back and says, great job, we did it, we got our engagement up there, let's not look at it again, we're done, you know, we're going to move on to the next thing until another crisis happens and we just throw some money at it again. And, and, and granted, does it work? Yes, in all the loose terms of that short period, it works, but you need a plan. And no matter who you are, no matter how big you are, no matter how small you are, you need to basically be willing to sit down and plan all this out. But if I spend $50,000, am I bringing in, ideally, if you spend 50000 you should make triple what you spend. Yeah, there's so a, are yeah. they? Do they have the analytics, the back that, well, yes, we spent hundred or we spent fifty that we brought in one hundred and fifty thousand or more. Oh, they do at the end of the year, and it never justifies it. And their answer always is like, "Well, we need to spend more, obviously. That something's got to give sooner or later, even if you have a lot of money." A good, yeah, it's like their job. <laughs> yeah, right. A, a good example as well is, um, you know, there was an there was a the person from up north. They said we, the worst thing we've ever done is we did ads for a client who wanted to spend over 120 a month on and they said it was a good product i can't say what the product is but it's a famous product everybody knows it um it was a variation of it um and this was like just easy a slam dunk they said we had three sales from that 120k that we spent on that so said those three sales were maybe about 150 dollars each so we we made you know, we, we, I don't even think that's like, a, a, not a quarter, or a, we made a fraction of what we spent. And they said, and they were very upset. And I'm like, I would be upset if, if, if that, they, they said, I'm like, well, what did you post on, you know, the, the social media page? They're like, well, we didn't really post much because ads are working for us. I'm like, so you didn't even build up that audience with content. They're like, no, we built it up through ads. And then they, and then they said, but that's why it was then, a, the ads stopped, yeah. they have no audience. And they said that's why there was a meltdown when and everybody got involved then because they're like, we spent this much and it only converted. A, it sounded like the ads, like not every ad hits. We know that. 100%. But something had to go wrong. <laughs> if you if you are spending this much and you only got this much, something went wrong somewhere with the ad. I, he didn't, he, this guy of course said no. Like nothing went wrong. Well, because they're spending so much money, they don't want to admit a problem. That's that old, but that's that old mentality. That's the old marketing mantra. That's the mantra. old marketing mantra, right. Instead of, they create these big campaigns, and at the end, it's always a success. Right. Whereas we break, say, a big campaign into a couple dozen mini campaigns, and mm -hmm. if one falters, you be agile enough and you change it. Right. Because you're going to get better results in the end. And we're willing to adapt. To that. You have really to, to change to and change to that because, like you said, Facebook may not be the be all end all one day. LinkedIn may take the crown. Something else may come up. That who knows? Tick, TikTok is supposedly working on a function so you can add photos like Instagram. So maybe TikTok's going to take. Who knows? You don't know. You don't know. The only thing that you do know is you have to be cognizant. You have to be willing to think of ways to constantly help your clients regardless of the size. Does that mean you need to know your, your your who your audience is? Yes. And where they're at? Yes. If you don't know that, say my audience is on LinkedIn and I'm posting on Facebook. You're not going to get them. You'll never get any results or vice versa. And that's what they asked us too. They said, you have so many clients so like, and you yourself handle so many clients. So how, how do you make it all work? I'm like, I do a lot of research. I'm like, I'm so knowledgeable on fields and areas I thought I would never be knowledgeable on. I'm like, I work with them to develop the mindset for what they... Because they're the expert. They're the expert, and they know more than I will ever know, so I need to take it from them. And by combining those two together, we combine our expertise together to, at the end of the day, create posts, create content, create things that their audience wants to see, that they're going to engage with, that ultimately is going to drive those people from Facebook or the platform to the website, through the sales funnel, to buy in the end, because that's what it's all about. Percent. So I know that sounds like a lot, but it was, like I said, it was it was a very eye-opening experience that, 
and, and should hopefully make you guys feel better that even larger businesses and larger business entities don't always have it together. And it should give you hope, and it gave me hope, and it gives us hope that we're doing the right things to truly grow businesses in this area. It sounds like you're doing a better job marketing businesses on social media than these big boys who have one single purpose. Their entire focus is throw money at it. And I even said, I'm like, even if we had a large ad budget, I'm like, it wouldn't all go towards ads on Facebook. I'm, I'm like, I'm like oh, some would. I'm like, without a doubt. I'm like, but everything else would have to be implemented in the background. Everything would have to be working in the background as well. I'm like, you should not have one thing doing all. Well, well what if it works? If it works, fantastic. Don't stop it. But you shouldn't. It's like working out one arm instead of the rest of your body. That's great, but everything should be working in sync. Everything should be working in sync. But I'm only right-handed. I don't You're need right. to worry about this, Armin. Well, then let's cut it off. I need it. I need it. Yeah. You all just of a sudden, you don't need it. All of a sudden, you need it, right? <laughs> and, and and that's and that's what it came came down to. So like all, and I'm not again. If it sounds like I'm coming across as negative, no. These people, they they knew they they were good people. They were they were bright and effervescent and. They clearly enjoyed what they did, and they clearly enjoyed the companies that they worked for, but it illustrated issues that they still have, and it just shows a general mentality that in certain areas and with certain factors, um, just where we don't, some companies and some strategies just don't work, and we're still stuck in the old ways, and we have to be brave, and we have to be willing to move past them to adapt with um, the audience's wants and needs and businesses wants and needs now because if you don't as we've seen with many businesses time and time again you will be left behind because yep. those other businesses will not show you mercy and you will be just a you will be a footnote in business and retail history while the other guys move on and so pretty much so that that's all i got what an adventure <laughs> it is an adventure and i like, learned a lot i don't want to know so you tell me in front of the world. And, and the, the thing is, I thought I was going this to This could have been completely the exact opposite, and you'd be like, John, we suck. That's what but, I... But it was polar opposite, so this is what's cool. And that's the thing. That's what I thought was going to happen. So I was ready to come in. I was ready to have a bunch of things I learned and a strategy. And not to say that we can't learn and become better. We're always looking for ways to become better. We, we will admit 100%, like, we're not perfect. And we, we claim to not be, we will never claim to be perfect. And we will I, I, I do claim to be perfect. What's it? What? At being imperfect. At imperfect. There we go, right? <laughs> so everybody is perfect no matter what. Right. We, we, we don't claim to, we are imperfect. We are always learning. So I was ready to come back with just bookloads of material to say, oh, we got to fix this. We got to do that. And who's to say that won't happen in the future? Um, but as of now, I was just, I was, I, I, I'm still a bit shocked, but in a good way. I'm not. Um, he's not, because he knew it. He knew it. I but, told you that when you left. I'm like, you know more than you think you know. But what, and the reason behind that is because we, we're striving, again, like smaller businesses matter. We shouldn't treat them any differently. We believe in growing your business um, by utilizing techniques that everyone else u u uses that are time tested. And once they don't work, we throw them out. And just by going there and seeing these larger Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 companies there, it's just it's just strengthened my resolve to continue doing that and then becoming even better. Because if these guys can't do it or they can do it, we definitely can do it. So that's all I have to say. Very cool. Thanks. Before I start dropping names and slipping and yes, getting in we trouble. Don't want to do that. So I better cut myself off while I can now. So. Sweet. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. So I guess that's it. That's and it. Uh, I'm Kyle. I'm John. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. All right. All right.